The state of New York is about to introduce the U.S.'s first cryptocurrency task force, comprised of stakeholders such as technologists, consumers, investors, blockchain companies, and academics. The task force will study the regulation and use of crypto and submit a report by the end of 2020. The announcement was first made by New York State Assembly member Clyde Bennell, who is also chair of the Subcommittee on Internet and New Technologies. We interviewed Clyde and asked him to tell us more about the task force. Well, I was interested in, uh, in Bitcoin. I mean, I think I first heard about it in, I don't know, the early 2010s or something like that. Um, and um, um, so, yeah, I heard about it for a very long, you know, for, for you know, a while back. Um, and I, um, I used to work for a state senator where, you know, we, you know I, uh, while I was working for him, I used to, you know, look at, we, we were trying to find out, you know, what was going on with Bitcoin, and that was back in 2014, 2013, 2014. Um, when I was blessed enough to get uh, in this position uh, as a New York State Assembly member in, in 2016, um, you know, uh, it was, you know, at that time, a lot of stuff had been changing in the blockchain space, in the crypto space. So from when I first heard of Bitcoin in, you know, 2000, around 2010, 2011, Bitcoin was the only token out there. You know, when I got elected, you know, we was a, it was a world of, you know, we had, and I also, you know, I also hold coins. I also, you know, uh, you know have uh, some, some tokens. So, um, but a lot have proliferated from them. But one day I was sitting in this office and I said, I wonder what are the different ways, because I heard that there were, uh, I saw that there were some Bitcoin ATMs around New York City. So I said, I wonder if there are any Bitcoin ATMs or what, and what's the closest one to my office. So I, I typed it in in Google and I saw that there was one a block and a half away from here. Is it still there? It's still there and that's the one I did the episode. I did the episode of me discovering that, uh, that Bitcoin ATM. That was all impromptu at the moment where I found that ATM a block and a half away from here. So if you look at a golden, you know, if you look at the fable of a golden goose, there was a goose that laid golden eggs and every day it laid a golden egg, every day it laid a golden egg. The owner of it was like, wow, this goose is gonna make me so much money and it's laying eggs, one egg every day. If I open it up, I, I wanna get all the eggs out. And when he opened it up, he killed the goose. No more eggs. If we overregulate, we can kill that goose. And cryptocurrency, blockchain technology, um, has the potential to lay golden eggs for a very long time. We need to make sure that we take care of the goose so that it can continue to, to lay eggs. We don't, but we don't want it to, we don't want the goose to go around killing other goose, right? <laughs> we don't, also we don't want to feed the goose too much so it becomes too big. So I think that we have to make sure that we come out with regulations that protect the goose, keep bad stuff from messing up the goose, and, 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 and to allow it also to continue to lay the eggs. We're happy that the governor, Governor um, Andrew Cuomo, signed into law to be able to put together uh, a cryptocurrency, uh, what we call it, uh, a digital currency um, uh, task force, um, where we were going to get uh, stakeholders from around the industry, uh, from from technologists to 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 exchanges, to coins, to investors to consumers, to the New York State DFS, to be able to, to, to get in a room to help figure out what the proper level of regulations are, um, to help figure out, to define what these, what these different tokens are, how do they use, how they're going to be used in New York, um, to define and to figure out how to use blockchain properly in New York. Um, and they're gonna put together a report to help guide us on the right levels of, of regulations in the state. 
what's great is that in conjunction with that task force, uh, California um, has a blockchain work group that, and that was signed into law around the same time. Um, and with California study and New York study or what have you, we could try to figure out the proper level of regulations and the proper use of blockchain uh, for the two biggest states, but really for the country and maybe the world. So a lot of people talk about the bit license and speak about it in negative sense or what have you. And we have to find the right level of regulations. But New York was the first municipality, government source um, in the nation and in the world to protect its investors, to protect the regular consumers, right? Back when New York State came out with the bit license in 2014 when they were looking at it, we were in a world where if you had, if you had, uh, you know, Bitcoin and you were, you purchased Bitcoin on an exchange like Mt. Gox, and it was compromised, you had no recourse, none. New York State, under the DFS, Department of Financial Services, in a short, in a, you know, deliberately and, 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 and very, uh, uh, you know, very smartly came up with the bit license. They had, um, and people, you know, and there's controversy around it or what have you, but I'm happy to be in a state where New Yorkers are protected. If you are, if you're an exchange in New York and, and New Yorkers buy uh, cryptocurrencies, you are protected here. Now that was, that was four years ago, right? There's a, a lot changes in four years. So the definition, that was, at, and at, at that time, Bitcoin was the only player in town, yeah. right? Now we have, I don't know how many coins, right? How many tokens? Now, now we have different kinds of tokens. Now we have security tokens. Now we have utility tokens. Now we have, we have a whole host of, you know, so the world has changed a whole lot. Um, um, and um, um, so that's why this task force is important to look at, you know, not where the ball is, but where, where it's going. Um, but I think that New York is a great place for cryptocurrency. I think New York is a great place for blockchain technology. So the crypto landscape in the U.S. is interesting. So there are certain states that are wide open. That's right. So I don't want to name any, but there are certain states that are wide open and say, look, any blockchain company, any blockchain business, come on, we love you. There are states that are saying, you know, you want to you want to pay taxes in, in crypto. No problem. You want to pay whatever, you know, in crypto. No problem. And there are states that are not speaking about it at all. So you have the whole gamut, right? You have the whole gamut that's out there. Um, New York is the empire state. I know we like to brag about that, but I think we are. <laughs> uh, we're the big apple with the empire state. But there's no doubt we are the financial capital of the world. So we can't be the wild, wild west. We can't say whatever goes here, goes here, right? Because the world is watching. Not only are other states watching, the world is watching, right? When we came out, the, the bit license has been used by many states and many countries as a model for regulations. So being that that's the case, being that we, are, we have to be careful, deliberate, um, and exacting on how we come out with these, uh, with, with regulations and, and our approach toward, you know, toward, toward cryptocurrency and our approach toward, uh, toward, toward blockchain. I can't speak on, on, on the SEC, that's federal government. I can't speak on the SEC's, um, potential decision on, on allowing, uh, um, uh, Bitcoin, uh, electronic traded funds. But I, I will say that in, in the space of, of cryptocurrency trading, you've seen two years ago um, the Commodities Exchange in, in Chicago right, uh, trade in Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. You've seen the New York Stock Exchange um, uh, relax their view towards, uh, towards cryptocurrency. You've seen Many of the, you've seen many of the established financial institutions have and include 
cryptocurrency and blockchain related divisions. So, so um, in a relatively short time, that could be, that seems like a long time for folks, for the, for the impatient young people in the space. But in a relatively short time, um, the acceptance of cryptocurrency um, in traditional finance, it's been happening on a very fast pace. I know people are impatient. People think it's taking a long time, but it's not really, it's not really taking a long time. Keep in mind, we have to look at the context. This is an asset, if I can call it that, that is 10 years old. That, that's a new thing for the, right? That was developed very fast and that's changing very fast. So for the SEC to, to for, for these financial, these, these established older financial institutions to adopt uh, these assets at this point is, is, is unheard of. So Wyoming did it. I think Ohio just recently said okay. You know, I think. So it's interesting. If you look at my, if you looked at my, uh, my YouTube episode, where I tried to buy pizza with Bitcoin, when I actually went to go buy it, I couldn't do it because I didn't want to spend. I didn't want to spend my Bitcoin on a two dollar pizza, mm -hmm. and then have it be ten dollars later on. So what's interesting is that I don't think crypto is in a place for currency yet. And this is my personal opinion. This is my personal opinion. This is not the opinion of the government. I don't think crypto is in this place until, but what's interesting, generally speaking, generally speaking, there are tokens that are called stable tokens that are, I think they're called stable tokens. I think that's what they're called. Excuse me if I'm wrong, but there are tokens that are pegged towards with the dollar, for example, mm -hmm. right? That, that don't have the volatility. If that's kind of tokenized, then I could see that use its currency easier. But um, also I don't see, I don't know if Bitcoin would be the standard to use as currency. I would, when I went there, when I went to go buy the pizza, I would be more willing to spend Litecoin on the pizza mm -hmm. than Bitcoin. Um, so saying all that, I don't know if we're in a place yet to have general, exception, uh, general acceptance of uh, accepting crypto for taxes. How long do you yeah. think it would take? I don't know. I, you know, I'm, I'm looking at these stable coins and seeing that, you know, that, that's interesting to me, you know, to see if, you know, if you have these tokens that are, that are pegged towards, I say the U.S. dollar or some other kind of, um, you know, some other kind of fiat currency, you know, what, what that, you know, what that means. So people are investing in, in people are investing significant amounts in, in cryptocurrency. Companies are, are wrapping their business around that technology. So because that's the case, it's very important to protect folks' investments, right? So whether you invest in something big or small, it's important for you to, for you, for you, on, the, on one hand, for consumer protection and for investor protection, to make sure that the, you guys are properly protected. So that's one thing. So I don't, think that, that, I don't think it's too small for us to regulate. And they probably meant larger scale, wide, wider scale. I don't know what the context of that question was because I respect the folks and I respect that conference. Another thing also is that also companies that are, that are, um, that are doing activities around the space also want to make sure that they are properly uh, protected and that they can grow. So I think finding the right kinds of the, the right level of regulations for them is important and I don't think it's I don't think it's it's too small for us to talk about and think about. I don't want to assure people one thing or not. Like I said, as as how I define the way I view crypto, I view crypto as 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 a as a 
as a great potential, that has a great potential, a great potential in the technology, great potential to be able to exchange value with, um, and I think that it's a golden goose. And, and, and the way I view it is the same thing, is that we properly, we find the right level of regulations so that we don't kill it, and that it'll continue to provide eggs for us. But this is not a new thing. I mean, I'm sorry. It's not new that we're dealing with new technology. I can imagine us having this same interview back in 1996, talking about the internet. And you can say, oh my gosh, what are we gonna do about the internet? Or, you know, how are we gonna talk? What's the proper level of regulations? Now keep in mind, we're in the internet world, maybe 20 years into the internet world, and we're still trying to figure out what to do with privacy. We're still trying to figure out what the right levels of, of protections you need and what are, what are your rights with your personal data, right? California just came out with a set of regulations. Uh, Europe came out with their set of their GDPR, you know, less than a year ago. So 20 years later, we're still trying to figure out the internet. Um, and and we're we, we have to figure this out. Right? 20 years later, it's still relatively new. So with crypto, I think we're in a similar space, but even earlier. Cointelegraph. Like, subscribe, and hodl.